Hello, my Milton family, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope that you had a wonderful week. Uh, thank you for just uh, letting me get that rest uh, for last week. That's why we didn't have a weekly message, uh, because I wanted to really take this time off uh, just to recharge. Uh, I think I am pretty well recharged. Uh, but the reason why I mentioned this is, number one, to thank uh, everyone also, uh, for respecting sort of my break, but also because something happened the day that my break started or sort of that Sunday. And uh, as I was, as I was, you know, waking up in the morning, I knew that it was snowing. So I, I had to wake up and see if I needed to shovel my way out of the driveway or not. Luckily, in that Sunday, it wasn't that bad. So, you know, I was able to drive out and go to church. Now, after the worship service, I'm going back home. And the only thing on my mind is how I'm going to shovel all of this. And I'm just like, oh, gosh, I don't want to do this. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, and I go in and I, and I see my driveway and this is how it looked like. Uh, so obviously I had to take the picture after I got out of my car. Uh, for those wondering why the grill is outside is because I don't want to cook meat inside the home and stink up my house, making it smell like meat. So I do try to cook my meat outdoors uh, where the smell can go away. So uh, any, anyway, that is sort of random that there's a grill there. But I just wanted to take the picture at that time. And just my driveway was clean. And there's a bunch of metaphors, and you probably hear me preach about it using it as a metaphor, and I can't wait. You know, I love how God, you know, gives me these nuggets, you know. It's just so wonderful. But I do kind of want to share about my initial response. Uh, there's two things. There was one uh, that I got initially, and also my response as I think about it a little bit more. How we can kind of use this experience, or what it means to me, or what God has moved in me, in my heart, uh, to share share to you about. Well, the first one, my initial response is, oh my goodness, my neighbors love me. Now, you might be thinking love when you think of love. It's like, uh, like not in that way, but man, do they care about me. And goodness, that command to love our neighbors, sometimes we overcomplicate it. We think loving our neighbors is social justice and a change in laws, which, by the way, is important. So I'm not going to dismiss that. You now we think, oh, it needs to be a mass movement. Of, you know, we got to save the world. We got to save the starving children and all this. And don't get me wrong. Those are all things that we need to do and we are called to do. But loving your neighbor can come in such a simple act as Shoveling the driveway or plowing it. So I know that this uh, neighbor of mine had this John Deere with a uh, you know, snow plowing thing. But it's not. I'm not saying that it was easy for the neighbor. And this is why I felt so loved. Because, gosh, it's still his time, his energy, his gas. But he showed that appreciation for neighbor and the town that he was living. I do not know if he knew that I was a pastor and he was doing that because I was the pastor. I have no idea. But one of the things that came into my mind was, wow, I feel so loved by the city of Milton, the whole town of Milton. That one person was a representative of this whole town. And that's who we are when it comes to loving our neighbor. Your actions of love to your neighbor, even if it's small, are a representative of God. Of God's people. And it doesn't have to be all complicated. So I encourage you to do small acts of love to your neighbor. Ask them how things are going. You know, when COVID is over, invite them over. Or invite them to your porch to have an iced tea or some coffee. You know, if you notice that they're not shoveling their sidewalk just say, hey, I'm going to, I'll shovel this for you this time because, you know, I don't, uh, because I want you to know that I'm your neighbor and you are taken care of by your neighbors. You know, simple things like that can show so much of God's love and love of neighbor. Don't we just love to just use this language to overcomplicate things, right? It's, it's that kiss rule, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? It's just, 
yeah, loving your neighbor shouldn't be that complicated sometimes. Just these simple things. Second thing that came out of my mind was, oh my gosh, I felt so indebted to this person that I felt I needed to respond. I needed to give him something. I feel so embedded still, indebted still. And I hope that I meet this person so I can, you know, give him a small gift, a token of appreciation as a response. Not because the person needs it, but just as a response. And that's exactly what our worship, that's exactly what our relationship with God ought to look like. When we receive God's grace, when we receive and we understand that God loves a sinner like us, Sinners like us just fully embraces us. Our natu- our, we would want to respond, and that's what makes a vibrant worship. That's what makes a vibrant church is a response to the wonderful things that God has given us. Sometimes, yes, it does feel like an obligation. Sometimes it does feel like a checklist for us. And, you know, if that continues, that's a problem. But, you know, there is also God's grace and consistency. But also there's an even more beautiful part in responding. And that's what I think the Bible means by saying joyful obedience. We can be joyful in obeying and doing uh, our communion and our worship service, of uh, helping the community, of reading scripture, of praying, all these things, because it's a response to the things that God has given us. You know, my dirty driveway was cleaned, but God, man, he cleaned my dirty heart. And oh my goodness, is it even cleaner than whatever shovel or whatever thing because it's washed by the blood of Christ. Just think about that. I encourage you to think about that. And I pray that our response to that would be to worship God in joyful a response because we feel we have received something. And if you have not felt that, ask God for that. Because, gosh, you are missing out. You are. So I encourage you, I encourage you, whatever stage you are in your faith, to think and to respond. And oh my goodness, is it such a wonderful thing. I hope you enjoyed this message. And I hope to see everyone on our drive through communion this Sunday. Or at least leave a comment on our online worship. And uh, I hope you have the rest of the week, a wonderful rest of the week. Bye.